All right, guys, it's Shalom with Paradox Gaming Network, and today we're going to dive into Archage Unchained 101, and I'm going to cover three topics. The first is I want to show you how to save your character data in case you really enjoy what your character looks like, so you don't have to spend a bunch of time in Unchained recreating that character. Number two, we're going to talk about the FOV mod, where it stands right now, and then for my old school Archage players that aren't used to the new settings, why you might not need it, because Excel actually gave us a setting that sort of gives you what you might be looking for. And finally, I'm going to talk about the weapon swap system versus the hot swap system. Players who haven't been around for a while, you aren't aware of the weapon swap. It allows you to change your left-handed weapon without changing your main. And there's a little trick to it that might cause you to freak out when you first get into it. You're going to lose your weapon. So I want to make sure that everybody knows what that is so people don't freak out like I did. So here's Jalan, and I've decided that I don't want to change a single thing about my character. But how do I get this template from the Legacy server to the Unchained server? Well, the first thing is I'm going to go into the Marketplace, and then I'm going to go up here to Salon. And what that's going to do is it's going to take me into the Character Creator, and if I had a salon certificate, I could make these changes on live. But if I just want to store my character, I'm going to go to save. If you want to make some tweaks to your character for the Unchained server, make those changes and then come down here to save. And it's going to pop a box and you're going to want to put just your character name. Now, just above it up here, when I hit save, it's going to pop a file location and it's going to tell you where it saved that file. So I hit confirm, that's where it sent that file. Now, when we get the Unchained launcher and we can build our characters early, or when it's launch day, you're gonna come on here and you're going to say to yourself, oh, I can just load that character. When you hit load, you're gonna find nothing happens because you need to put the file in the right location. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this over here so you guys can see this. And there is my Jalan file that I just created. And I'm going to drag that over to my desktop. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go exactly to where you need to be. And for this case, I'm going to be in user two. So as you can see, I'm in user two because I have two clients open. I want to go into custom. And I want to drop this file in. Now when I move that off the screen, and I hit load, there's the Jalan file. I apply it, and there is Jalan. Now when I bring him back, you will find there's the character, saved, everything you need. This is gonna save you some time in the character creator if you wanna make sure you get it just perfect. Now for those of you that are gonna have Unchained in advance, not a big deal. For those of you that are gonna be trying to make your character on launch day and go, I know a lot of times people don't want to waste time on go day. They just want to get going. This lets you make the character in advance and have exactly the character you want. Now, next up today, I want to talk about the FOV mod. And as it stands right now, the most recent quote we have is from Crolin. And then it hasn't been determined yet if the FOV mod is going to be a bannable offense, if it's going to be allowed. On Legacy, the FOV mod is allowed. Now, as you can see from where I'm at, a lot of people have asked me where I got the FOV mod. I actually don't have the FOV mod installed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here to options and right here in the screen settings, I have three camera modes. I have action, classic, and wide. What I'm on right now is the wide mode and it sort of gives that FOV mod feel. Now I know the FOV mod lets you go zoomed way more out, but I think for most people, they're gonna find that the wide setting is more than enough. This is as far out as you can get on the action setting. And then come back in here and we go out to classic. And you can see you can go just a little bit further out. But really when we come when we come down here to the uh we come down here to the wide view, I think this gives us about what we need. If you disagree, let me know in the comments below. It's completely possible that we can shape Crolin's mind and help guide his decision to what the player base wants. Now, I will say that the FOV mod gives you a frame of reference that they didn't really intend when they made the game. That's really not my thing to say. That's really up to the players to say, hey, we've grown accustomed to it. This is what we want. 
Or it's up to the players to say no. It, a mod is a mod, and if they gave us the wide view, the game is designed around the wide view, that should be all that we're entitled to. All right, guys, and the last thing I'm going to talk about today is this new weapon swapping ability. This is something that old school players are going to look at and think we got what we wanted from XL, and what we got was almost what we wanted, but not exactly. So first and foremost, we have to set up a hotkey for it. So come into options, go to character controls, and it's going to be this last option. Now, it's going to be unbound by default. I happen to use Z. Use whatever key is, is good for you. Now, when I hit apply, I want to try first and foremost to equip I'm going to equip my weapons to see what happens. So I put in a club and it goes into the main hand only because the main hand was empty. Now when I click on my main dagger, it goes into the off hand because the off hand was empty. Now there is no way for me to be able to hot swap into that secondary slot, even with this system, even if I lock my club in place. So you all remember, if I click on a dagger, it's going to go into the main slot, which isn't what I want as a healer. If I were to click on a shield, it'll go into the secondary slot because a shield can only go into the secondary slot. Now, what you want to do here is you want to right click on this dial and then you want to set up your gear sets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my club and my shield and then I'm going to hit Z. They'll move over here and I'm going to go dagger and a different shield. And then when I close this, you'll notice I have a dagger and a shield. When I hit Z, I bring up a club and a shield. Now I know what you're saying. You're saying, Jay, I'm a mage, I'm a healer. That dagger isn't gonna do anything for me. So what you do is you right click again, pull the dagger out, lock that main hand into place. So now when I go Z, it's only changing my off hand. It gives me two gear sets in play. Now the good part about this is I can swap between, you know, I can swap between shields or what I could do is I could pull one shield out. I could put my dagger in there. And so on one set, I have club shield. The other set, I have club dagger. Now, if I need to use my kraken shield on either build from down here on my hotbar, I put the kraken shield in and I use it. Now, here's the problem. There's no way for me to get that, that dagger back in the secondary spot. I click on the dagger from my hotbar it's still going to override my main hand weapon because you cannot lock the main hand weapon into place. So hot swapping from your bar will still override your main hand weapon. So it does become problematic, but it's what we got. It allows you to have those two different builds. And so in my case, I'm going to put my dagger back up here. So really it's going to become a, an episode of training yourself. If you're a healer, you have club dagger and you need to use a shield, flip back to a shield first and then feel free to activate on use one shield, hot swap in and activate the other one. So I know a lot of people were asking me about the weapon swap thing. We wanted it so that we could lock in our main hand weapon all the time. We didn't get that, but the tool we got is very useful. And like I said, second reminder, you're gonna notice that the weapons do not come back into your inventory. So if you're freaking out and you're like, where is my expensive dagger? It's still there. Just right click. If you need to get to your offhand weapon, you can just pull it out manually or you could Z over to it. And if I do this, I Z, I Z again, I could pull the dagger out. I could put its replacement in there. So hopefully that helps and it's not as confusing and you definitely don't freak out and panic because your weapon's missing. All right, and that is it for today, guys. I wanted to get a couple of quick tips out to you. I am working on a lot of Arcage 101 content. We did find out that we're gonna have the Arcage Unchained version on the PTS, hopefully on the 23rd of September. There's a lot more videos I wanna do this week. There's a lot of projects and lots of bits and pieces I'm working on, so trust on seeing some of that, hopefully by the end of the week, uh, but a lot of it I'm stuck on the PTS for. I will let you know that I am starting Baby Steps, the Arcage Unchained website, so you can find the video library, the, the timestamps directly to topics uh, over there. It's a really rough work in progress. If you have any suggestions for me, please let me know. If you wanna contribute, please let me know. I'd love to get that stuff up there. 
I'm busy making lots and lots of content, lots of streaming. So the website is actually the tertiary thing. It'll, it'll get done as it gets done. I'll try to get it up to date as quickly as I can. That's it for today. Just a reminder, I am streaming regularly now, three days a week, Monday nights, Wednesday mornings, and Friday afternoons. I will see you for my next live stream, and make sure if you've got any questions at all, leave them in the comments below. Take care. What are you still doing here? Nobody ever stays this long. This is the end screen. Well, since you're here, there's a couple other videos I think you should check out. And all those names? Those are my patrons over at Patreon. I couldn't do this without them. So, big thanks to them for all their support.